Tomorrow is Gabrielle Hoach's birthday. Hoach was born at 375 Rue de Chambeau in St. Boniface on March 22nd, 1909, and she went on to become a writer acclaimed across Canada and around the world. She's still very much taught in many parts of the world. Tomorrow, the annual benefit to help with the preservation of her birthplace on Deschambeau will take place. It will also mark the uh, 70th anniversary of the publication of her first novel, The Tin Flute. There's probably no one in Manitoba who knows more about Gabrielle Roy than Annette St-Pierre. Miss St-Pierre taught Gabrielle Roy's work, but she also knew her very well. I spoke with her at her home yesterday in St. Boniface, and I began by by asking her how she discovered the work of Gabrielle Roy. When I came to Manitoba, I was teaching in the high school in Lorette, and uh, three uh, books were on the curriculum. And I didn't know much about the author, and even the professors with me didn't know anything about Gabrielle, because she was, well, she was not well known in those days. When you read her work, what did you think? Well, it wasn't easy, because the first one was in grade 10, it was about La Petite Poule d'eau, and La Petite Poule d'eau, so I had to go there twice to know something about that. La Petite Poule d'eau in, in English is the little water hen, right? Yes. So I went to see that place. And uh, so you went to Waterhen? I went to Waterhen, huh? mm -hmm. and then I wanted to know Gabrielle Roy. And it wasn't easy because it was all, she refused all the time to meet people who were asking to see her. I met her in um, Saint-Hilaire, Quebec, while I was taking a summer course in Ottawa. First time I encountered Gabrielle Roy. And then I, I read all her books after because I, my master's degree was on books of Gabrielle Roy, six books of Gabrielle Roy. When you finally met her, what, what did you think? Oh, that was a, a grand coup de coeur for me. A coup de coeur. It was really like I spent about two hours with her, and it, it was just like 15 minutes. She was a very good storyteller, and uh, she was warm and uh, very, uh, would say, um, I can say. That's okay. You can, you, you can say it in French. Chaleureuse. And the chaleureuse is simple. Mm -hmm. I loved her. Mm -hmm. Why did you go to Waterhen, though? I wanted to see the place because it was, that book was so poetic. It wasn't easy to teach in grade 10 because most of them would say it was plat was platinum, it was dull huh, for them. Huh? Mm -hmm. But when, when I talked to the, when I said that to Gabrielle Leroy, she said, well, maybe they could have that book in grade 12, because they're too young in grade 10 to understand the, po the, the, the poetry in that book. It's really a good book. I like it, and I read it many, many times. So you met her first, and then you met her a number of times later, right? I met her twice after, mm -hmm. yes. And, and uh, what was the occasion of your other visits with her? The second time she, she, she phoned me, I was teaching in St. Boniface and she, I was very, very busy and she, she was in an hotel, in a very, an hotel assimilable mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in Winnipeg mm -hmm. and she wanted to get out. Mm -hmm. She was lonesome there and she, uh, she couldn't go anywhere because she didn't have any family in those days. And uh, when I got there, she, uh, I wanted, oh, she, wasn't very she was very impatient when I got there because I was late for about half an hour. It wasn't easy. That was on Notre Dame, mm -hmm. in that corner, Ellis and all that. Mm -hmm. and, I got, and she said, it's about time you come in. And I asked her what I could do for her. You know, I think she, she was pouting for about 15 minutes because she was, uh, she, you know, she had a character, that lady. <laughs> And I asked her what she would like, and she said, well, I'd like to see Manitoba. So I took her to Lorette, where I was, mm -hmm. and then from Lorette we went to St. Anne, mm -hmm. because she wanted to see the place in St. Anne. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the church when she, she knelt down and she prayed so fervently, mm -hmm. I looked at her and uh, I was surprised, and uh, because I, I knew that she had left religion when she was in Europe, but she came back to religion after. It shows in some of her books. She said she came back to religion after she had met Teilhard de Jardin. Teilhard de Jardin, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when the, the Pope John Twenty Third was there, mm -hmm. and also at the um, when her sister died in, in, in the in the United States, uh, those three things that made her came back to religion. When you um, met her for the last time, what were the circumstances of that? It was very sad. That time she was uh, writing her last book. She was writing Ces Enfants de ma vie, Children of My Heart. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, in the convent in St. Pierre. So I got there after my class at uh, 4.30, 5.30, I think. 
and I really risked my life. I couldn't see anything, but I was. Why was it? Was there a blizzard? Yeah, mm -hmm. a blizzard was awful. It's mm -hmm. the '59, I think. '59. Mm -hmm. huh? Gee, I really, I really risked my life there, and I was supposed to see her just an hour. So I got up after one hour and said, "Sit down, sit down." And then uh, we kept on talking. And she would ask you, uh, "Are you happy? What about life? Mm -hmm. Is life is life?" giving you what you would like, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. she, was, she, she was like that sometimes. And uh, that time she was, she, she was quite sick and I couldn't recognize her. Her face has changed so much. And uh, when I left, she said, do you think uh, I'm getting older? And I just asked a question instead of saying yes. I just said, well, have you been sick? And she finished that book, though. And she died only in 1983. 1983. I went to a funeral in Quebec City. You know, in Quebec, Gabriel Roy was really a, a great author, very great author. They were teaching her books everywhere, but in, it, it took a few years before we did that in, the, in Manitoba. And we had the books on the curriculum, uh, thanks to a green on. Mm -hmm. that, huh? Oh, thanks to the Grey Nuns, yeah. Grey Nuns, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Sister de, Mo de Moissac was a member of the, uh, uh, of a uh, of a committee mm -hmm. at the Department of Education, and she's the, the one who... In Quebec, they thought she was from Quebec, right? All of them. All of them. When I got there, it was, and it was time to, you know, find a subject for my thesis, the, old, the professor told me, you take Gabrielle Arroyo because you're from Manitoba, and they were calling me Gabrielle Roy sometimes. The students were calling me Gabrielle Roy. So I chose Gabrielle Roy. But at last, now people know she is from Manitoba. People were sending money when they restored the house, and a, a lady from Gim Gimli wrote me and said, you know, I read all her books, and I'm just learning that she, is, she was from Manitoba. Mm. Would you believe that? How do you see, now you've lived in Manitoba a long time, although you're originally from Quebec. How how is Manitoba reflected in her writing? Most of her books they are about Manitoba. I would say that she was influenced by the uh, you know the prairie landscape. Huh? That's why she talks so much about that. And I she made me love Manitoba <laughs> in her book because I didn't like Manitoba for the first years. In her book of fragile lights of earth, huh, mm. there is a very good article, Mon Héritage du Manitoba. She loved Manitoba also, Gabriella Arwan. She made me love it. And not only me, but many Manitobans also. You played a big role in helping to restore Rue de Chambeau, right? It, when, when you came upon the house, it wasn't in very good shape, was it? And we paid quite a lot for that house. There were four, four apartments in that. And, uh, oh, gee, I remember the day when the engineers came and uh, they, they told us, uh, that we had to do the whole thing. The basement has to be done, everything. And the, the house has to be lifted all so on. I just turned around and I said, please, Gabriel Roy, do something. The cost was 100,000. We didn't have any, we didn't have a penny when we started that thing. We said, well, we're going to ask for money and we'll go step by step. And uh, somebody told me to write, to write to Glenn Murray. So I wrote to Glenn Murray. Mm -hmm because I knew his mother was a fan of Gabriel Leroy, and he gave me $100,000 for the basement. Mm -hmm. We've been very, very lucky, and the province was very good, and even the uh, federal. And what will you be thinking about on Sunday when you go to the celebration for Gabriel Leroy? I feel like crying because I'm so happy. That was the greatest, the nicest, the biggest project in my life, that mm -hmm. thing. Oh, yes, I never forget that. I feel so lucky to have met you. This is so special. Uh, thank you very much. I know that you have the books all laid out here on the table. We could talk forever about Gabrielle <laughs> Wah. Thank you very much for just a little bit of conversation about her. Congratulations for what you've managed to do. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And that is the wonderful Annette St. Pierre, longtime friend, admirer, and teacher of the work of Gabrielle Waugh at her home yesterday in St. Boniface. And tomorrow, the annual benefit for the continuing preservation of Gabrielle Waugh's birthday, birthplace rather, at 375 Rue Deschambeaux, will be held at the St. Boniface Golf Club at 100 Uville.
It starts at noon, runs until 2.30. If you'd like to go, there are still a few tickets left available at the Maison Gabriel Roy. That's at 375 Rue Deschambeau. Or you can call 204-231-3853. That's 204-231-3853. Or via email, info at maisongabrielois.mb.com. Dot C-A.